Hi everyone, welcome back to another video. I'm sorry for the delay in getting this out to you. It's the end of the school term. We've packed and unpacked and it's just been chaos. So I do apologise, but I'm here and I've chosen to do a page in RJ Hampson's Oceans. Now I do have his um, Dragon Dreams, which is just as beautiful, but this page really jumped out of me for some reason. So I've chosen to do this page which is titled Island Dream. Let's centralise you. This is well, what was a plastic cover for a binder. So I do have a map, but um, in the chaos of um, unpacking and packing, I have no idea where I've put it. <laughs> oh dear, yeah. And my usual chaos. Now I can't find my practice sheet of, oh my goodness, people. What is going on anyway? So I've chosen to do the background in Distress Inks <clears throat> and I've got the makeup type brushes to do it with because um, on Amazon paper I just find it easier to do it. Um, so we're going to layer it up and we're going to go from a dark blue into sort of greeny blues. Um, and Then we've got the fishes obviously and the little flower to do. So I'm going to bring you in so you can see I have probably a little bit too close. Okay, so we're going to use um, Blueprint Sketch, which is one of the newer colours, which is gorgeous. Okay, so I'm going to take my brush tool and I've got, I've inked it up. Now on the plastic sheet, just by the side of me, let me move you over so you can see, I'm just going to, I'm just going to dab it off. Right, then we're going to come in and we're going to start at this top corner. So I'm really lightly, really lightly, I'm going to use uh, the advantage of the brush. Oh my goodness, hang on a minute. Let me come out a little bit so you can see. this um, Because I, my room's not set up properly, I've got the tripod holding my um, camera up, set on like an ottoman next to me. Um, so I can't get it up high enough like I normally would, but um, my husband's going to fix a shelf up for me so that that problem will be resolved. Um, yeah, so you're going to have to just layer it up. Let me put this here so you can see what colour I'm using. So just gently build up that colour. That's the key to not having streaks and layers and layers. Now the other thing, I've just got a blank piece of card here. I'm just going to hold the page with my fingers on that card because Distress Inks will pick up fingerprints um, and I'm probably going to have a load of fingerprints on this because I've flipped through the book many times because I adore RJ Hampson's work and um, as you know he kindly brought these books for me. So they've been very precious. So I'm currently sat with, the way I've got my room sat, set up is um, I'm sat like right next to my window, but because I've moved rooms, I'm right on the main road, our house is. So I'm no longer at the back garden, I'm on the main road. So it's 30 odd degrees here in the UK Celsius and um, I've had to shut the windows to record because the noise from the road is hideous. So I am going to have to redesign my office <laughs> again um, to allow me to film whenever I want to rather than trying to wait until rush hour is over or um, I sit here and, and swelter to death which is also good fun and my prisma's melt. <laughs> So we're building up the colour and there are some fin fingerprints in there. But So I'm going to layer them like you would with um, any other, like pencils basically because um, that's how they seem to respond better without um, masses of streaks. So I want to get this corner dark. So I'm just using circular motions and I'm just going to 
bring it out until you get a faded edge again like we do with our pencils and I'm going to try and avoid the flowers in the design I'm not bothered about anything else because I'm going to go over those with white I've got two pens I've got a white a, a paint pen and then I'm going to use the jelly roll over the top of that and you get a really good white crisp <gasps> Ooh, it's just the lid Lucy don't panic a white, really good white crisp finish. And I'm dabbing it on because that gives us a really nice edge and we'll darken that colour up. All I can see that you can see on the screen at the moment is that fingerprint blob. But we'll keep going and you'll see it will work. It's just being patient. Okay. So I'm going to bring the next colour in now, which is Mermaid Lagoon. Let me come in a little closer. There we go. And get a drink of Coke, because I'm absolutely boiling in here, because I've got all the windows shut. I don't know if you can pick up on the main road noise. It's very annoying. So this is, I'll leave it there, Mermaid Lagoon. And I'm going to load my brush up. This is a... Just exactly the same, but a smaller one. No reason that I've got a smaller one, just the fact that um, that's the kit that came and I want, I'll wash them off when I'm done, but okay. So I'm going in at the edge again and I'm gonna bring that in and I'm going over that, I'm going over that edge that we put down a minute ago. And ignore your design, but just try and avoid the flowers. That's my aim, people. And it will layer up and it will smooth out and it's going to look spectacular I've been struggling with um, gosh I haven't shut up yet I've been struggling with a little bit of anxiety around colouring on camera I'm not sure why I think maybe um, maybe it's the end of term and I've got a little bit tired um, and things just get to you and when you when you struggle with anxiety tiredness anything extra that you have to do kind of can trigger it not all the time but it can I'm just rubbing it on the it can trigger it so I don't know what that was all about but just maybe I'm tired um, which won't be long though folks won't be long there is I break up from school next Wednesday at 12 o'clock I'm not excited at all to have free time to colour and do videos and play and the alarm not go off and no I'm not excited at all so I'm backtracking with this blue fingerprint again over the darker blue and <clears throat> what I found with Amazon paper is that once you've got a coat down the inks respond much much better in blending and smoothing out so I'm going to get that quite dark. And I'm not fussed about that. We can either put some splatters of paint on these little fingerprint marks. We can put some splatters of paint on or we can put water on. So when you first re-ink your pad, just go back in slowly and gently. I did buy some little um, tools. These... Um, I'll put them here. I did buy these blending tools for this very video, but that one might be okay. These ones, but they're they're little brushes, but they're so bouncy that they they don't blend. They just leave up a, a smudge on the page, so I won't be using those. Okay, I'm just going to make sure I've got enough of that and then we'll come back to it we'll let that dry no bleed through we'll let that dry next colour I just stuck my fingers in it <laughs> the next colour is cracked pistachio of course I've got a great big brush I'm allowing that was clever so I'm just going to use the edge of it and I'm going to 
go back really gently because we've just inked the brush. I'm going to go back over that piece and then start bringing that cracked pistachio in. It is so beautiful. Such an amazing colour. Sorry, I will put it there so you can see. I didn't um, sit and do my little cards. I have for the colouring pencils that we're going to use. Um, purely because I just felt like I should get on and do it and stop worrying about it. <clears throat> um, and while I felt able to just get on and just get on camera and get it done so that I wasn't it beats that anxiety monster so I'm going over the whole thing going back over the top which we will go back over again gently with the brush when I've re-inked it and you get this incredible blend between blue and green I'm not really too bothered about the flowers if I do go over them because we are going to do them in quite a dark colour. Okay, that was cracked pistachio. Now we're going to come in with um, speckled egg. Another bluey green colour which is fabulous. Okay, and then I'm going to start to bring that in here. Which is just that tiny bit sort of yellowy blue difference. But it's going to be quite a simple picture in terms of how we colour it. We're going to do the, obviously pay some attention to our goldfish. I've got the colours ready for those. But in terms of the rest of the page, I was just wanting it to look like a soft, um, nicely blended background. So, we're going to go back over now. I'm going to start again. And I'm going to go back to our um, blueprint sketch. Let me get my little card here. Okay, dab that off. And really gently just go on the page and start bringing it in. And we can build up those colours. And they it responds so much better once you've had ink on it. So don't be despondent if it's streaky in the first instance. Just let it dry and then come back and add some more colour and it will build up you just like anything in the craft world isn't it is patience and okay going in this corner again Can you see that beautiful blue colour beginning to really pick up? There we go. Okay, that's blueprint sketch. We're going to go back in with um, Mermaid Lagoon. <clears throat> oh, excuse me, let me get a sip of Coke. Coke with ice, people. Coke with ice. <laughs> Okay, right, really gently back in with our Mermaid Lagoon. And these colours will really then develop. But like I say, be patient, don't expect. I do that because it just helps with the blend. And seems to sort of, the colour seems to intensify as well. Um, yeah, just, just be patient and enjoy the process of it. And those colours will really build. Okay, I'm going to go back in this corner. Okay, I've got a nice blush brush mark there. It'll go. And I'm just going to keep layering these colours up until I'm until I'm happy. I want to move that sheet underneath really, it's making the page slippy. So I hope you're all doing okay and um, we've got a heat wave in the UK which is just agony. 
I, I don't do heat. I don't know how I'm going to cope with my son's wedding when we go to Cyprus. I really don't next year. Um, so we've had sort of um, 30 degrees heat and we are forecast um, sorry melting <laughs> we are forecast Sunday and Monday to have um, 36 degrees Celsius now I just do not do well with heat at all I can't I just can't cope it makes me feel physically sick um, so doing this video you're highly honoured people because I'm sat here literally melting because the <laughs> windows are shut <laughs> but I will, I'll go off in a minute and get them back open and get the air flowing in the room and then hopefully the rush hour traffic will die down and um, I'll be able to keep them open for later on so I'm going to bring that all the way round And I'll keep working the top of the page. I'm going to take the ink, the, um, what do you call it, plastic. <laughs> I'm going to take the plastic away shortly so that it doesn't keep roughing the page up. Okay, now I'm going to switch to, I'm going to switch to our speckled egg. And we're going to get that colour going. So just a nice soft bluey green. I know I've gone over my flower but it, that's going to be um, um, a deep sort of ready orange colour. Going in here and then you can just build up the colour however you're happy with. So I knew I wanted the corners extremely dark so that corner is beginning to build, but you can use the speckled egg to um, blend. If you can hear ducks in the background, no, you're not going mad. My neighbour is feeding them. So it's become a bit of a local spectator sport. I don't know if I've told you this before on the channel, but yeah, we have um, about 20 ducks sat in our neighbour's garden. <laughs> That's really annoying me, that, that little mark there. But like I said, I need to let it dry. And I'm not listening to my own advice, am I? I need to let it dry. Then I'll come back up, come back in, and we will build up even more intense colour. So, I'm not going to make you sit and watch me melt. Let's come out a minute. I'm not going to make you sit and watch me melt. So this side is going to be dark blue coming into the same colours. And then I'm going to bring those blue greens out. Um, and I'm just going to keep layering and layering until I get a nice smooth result and I'm happy with it. And then we will, excuse me, <laughs> then we'll come back and uh, we'll meet back up and I'll show you what the plan is for the rest of the page. All right, my lovely friends, I'll see you in a second. Okay, so this is what we've got. <clears throat> I did it exactly as I showed you on here brought the colours in and just left it quite subtle in the centre and then I've sprayed it using my um, Distress Sprayer by Tim Holtz oh Ranger, is it Tim Holtz as well? It just says Ranger that I can see um, and then while the, so while the ink was wet I sprayed it dabbed it and left it to air dry so this is as far as we've got. Now, in these shaded dark areas, I want to put some pencil work in. So um, I've got, hang on, let me find them. These colors, let me find the pencils. I'm not very organized, am I? Um, let me find them, they're there somewhere. All right, so I've got Caribbean Sea. Then I want powder blue. As you can see, I've got. I'm just not very organised. That's cloud blue. Where's powder blue? Oh, folks, I'm so sorry. Over here. <laughs> um, and then we've got light green. So we're going to be using those. The pale sage I might use. I'm not sure at the moment. So if I bring the camera in, 
you can then see what I'm talking about. So we've got, if I pop those there, ignore that bit for the minute. I can't cut them off because we've got the fish colours on the back. <clears throat> so if we take the Caribbean Sea and we pick out these dark areas. I've left the window open folks, I'm so sorry if it's noisy, that it's so hot. We've had a tiny, tiny bit of rain, um, but it's, it's so oppressive, the heat. Okay, then I'm going to take my light green. These are all Prismas, by the way. I'm sorry if I didn't say. Prismacolor Premier. And we're going to blend those two in. They make a beautiful blend together and it will match our background. And then I'm just going to take a slight bit of powder blue and just run that up the up the edge. Back in with our light green. Don't even really need that powder blue. I might ditch the powder blue, folks. So there we go. So let's. Um, and the other thing, it's like learning to colour again in this heat. So Caribbean Sea. Um, I've picked up the wrong pencil. This is actually cerulean blue. I do apologise, cerulean blue. Um, yeah, the Prisma colours play very differently. How do you cope, folks, in hot countries with your pencils? How do you keep them cool so that they're not going mushy? What do you do? I'm not used to this. And then we're going to go back down to our light green. So I, my apologies, it was because I had so many combinations I was going to use. Um, but with the background I thought this would really work well. So I'm blending in that, that light green and then I am just going to let it fade out. And this is where we're going to bring the powder blue in. And we're just going to bring that into that um, that beautiful, what colour was it? Speckled egg. And then let that fade out. So we get a really nice, deep um, shock of colour around that edge. So back with our cerulean blue. I'll do this again because I messed up. Cerulean blue. And we're going to go over those dark sketch lines. Not all of them, because they start to get lighter, as you'll see. And then just let that fade out so that we can go in with that beautiful light green colour. Here's our light green. I hope the road is not driving you mad. It's driving me mad. What I should do in the holidays is move my desk in my new room away from the window. So, I've never experienced <laughs> Prisma's uh, um, crumbling like that. It's this heat. Okay, and then powder blue, and we're just going to do the same. We're just going to take that edge and blend that in. So that we get that beautiful... Let's do another one. I know it's simple, but I just want to... Cerulean blue, get it in those nice deep dark areas and then let it fade out. So lessen the pressure. Again up here in that deep dark area, let it fade out. It's a gorgeous colour, the cerulean blue. Okay, then in with our light green. So I hope you're looking forward to summer. If you've got children, I expect you're dreading the thought of six weeks off. <laughs> I, I literally can't wait, honestly, folks. I've got so many videos that I want to do, but I've been so tired and so busy that they, they haven't happened. Um, so the thought of just being able to go get up without being 
overly exhausted. I'm always tired because of the fibromyalgia, but without being overly exhausted and just really enjoy coming on, doing videos, talking with you guys. I'm just so looking forward to it. So, if we come out now, so we can see that effect. That looks really awful on camera, but it looks really nice here. Um, I'm going to go off and find all the deep dark areas around the water where RJ's given us the shading and I'm going to fill those in. So even around here there'll be like the pale green into the blue. So where the very dark black is, that's going to be our cerulean blue. And then the like the hatch, the hatch lines, the lighter hatch lines is our um, uh, light green. And then we just fade it out into the um, powder blue. All right, my lovely friends, I'll see you in a second. Okay, folks, so I've done all the dark bits that I said I would with the same colours. We're going to have a look at the fish. And they are going to be goldfish. So I've got an array of colours here, but please don't be put off. Let's come down and have a look. Um, I'm just going to... Oh, wobble you for a second just so I've got you in the right position there we go okay so starting with our deco yellow I'm going to coat the entire fish <coughs> <coughs> excuse me I'm going to coat the entire fish in deco yellow just lightly Please don't worry about these. We are going to we, we are going to um, attend to those. I'm thinking of just outlining them actually in white because we're going to have quite a busy page. So I'm just I'm so sorry about the road, folks. I really hope you don't mind. I don't know about you, but it's driving me mad. I'm hoping that the camera's blocking it out while I'm talking. Um, you know, they do that noise cancel thing, don't they? The background. I'm not sure that this camera does it. It's just a... Um, it's, a it's a little Sony, but it's just a little camcorder. Just a literally record, stop, pause and play. That's it. Because for us technophobes... <laughs> um, I got it when I first started YouTube, well I've been doing YouTube about six months when I got it. Um, I really love it, it's a good little camera. So, um, but yes, I'm just hoping that it will block out the sound. Okay, so we've got a base coat of Deco Yellow. Um, I always find that if you, especially on um, Amazon print books, and if you're doing pencil work, that I don't always do it, but I do find that if you get that wax coat down to start with, it really helps with the rest of your colouring. Okay, I'm just going to move my practice one over to the side. We're going to take Tuscan Red. I hope you can see that colour, it's not too pale. And we are going to run down the side of his fin here. all the way down there we go I'm trying to be really gentle with the <laughs> these prismas because they've gone very smushy in this heat and then we're going to bring that colour out and we're not going to do it uniform we're just going to Bring that down, just going to kind of randomly bring it out. Put it up here. We will bring that up behind that fin because it's, it is behind him, so we're going to have a bit of dark there. Let that fade out. Then we'll put that in there. Can you see what I'm doing? I hope so. Um, put, those, put that colour there. So it's Tuscan Red we're using. I'm just going to deepen up that edge now. Really darken that up. And of course we can go back in. OK. 
Okay, right now down the side of this fin, I'm going to put some of this Tuscan red too, and then let that fade out. Okay, I've got me arm oh, stuck in. Sorry, I apologise. I've got my arm stuck in all the pencils. Right now, we're going to go in with permanent red, one of my favourite reds. This is, and we're going to go over that Tuscan red. And we're going to start to bring out colour. Like I say, I'm just going over the Tuscan red, but randomly I'm going to bring that this red out, permanent red out. My arm keeps sticking on all the pencils. Um, so what plans have you all got for the summer? Are you going on holiday? Um, I don't think we are this year because we are saving for my son's wedding in um, Cyprus, which is next year. So I'm going to go over this as well. And um, So I don't think we're going anywhere. I think my husband's going to have a week off at home with me during the holidays. We're going to do a bit of decorating. Okay then guess what we're going to go in with mineral orange make sure I've got the right one um, wrong one see in your wood here we go mineral orange and we're going to start to put that in now I'm going to bring a little bit round here introduce a little bit of that up his nose and let it fade out and then we're going to go over all that. Push those colours together. bring some down mineral orange into that tail we are right what's next golden rod beautiful color I love golden rod just um, check I've got the right color yeah you put that there it's getting in my way folks golden rod um, And then we're going to push that in. And we're going to go round that little bit of his face, bring that out. Okay. We'll come down his tail, we'll put some in goldenrod in here. And we'll have some up his fin, down the base of his fin, see I did um, practice these colours and I've used the colours but every time you do it they come out differently so don't be afraid to use the same colours to do your other fish because they always look so different. <coughs> Oh my goodness, you've got lorries of rush hour traffic and me coughing in your ear. I am sorry. Right. Yeah, so don't be afraid to use the same colours because they always come out so different. So I'm just using that golden rod, pushing that into that deco yellow, lightly blend that in. I put a little bit on these fins. And then we've got sunburst yellow. So we're going to use a little bit of sunburst yellow, lovely bright colour. We can put 
some patches of that in which will lift the colours that we have put in. And then we're going to go back to our deco yellow that we started with. And be careful when you go near that red because you don't want to drag that in your lighter areas. I'm just going to go over all that, give them some real brightness. This deco yellow is absolutely gorgeous. I will put a shot of, make sure you've got a shot of the colours that I've used in a second. You can see them all very clearly. Oh, look, we've missed him out. Goldenrod. So I'm going back in with Goldenrod. Take a little bit of the um, sunburst yellow. And then back in with our deco yellow. We'll just go over that. And then, if you feel like you want some, like we could put some permanent red, just a little bit of permanent red, just to lift those fins a little bit, just so they're not so flat, there we go, just a tiny bit, just doing it really lightly, just help actually just to give them a little bit more dimension. And I'm going to do all my fish like this. And you'll see that each time they will come out very differently. Um, and then I'm going to go back to my deco yellow and just blend that in on his fin. He looks cool. You could put um, a tiny bit of the permanent red round the little front of his face. And on top of those other colours, it's going to look very different. Just so he's got a bit of sort of randomness to him. Sunburst yellow. And then we'll go back in with Deco. There we go. Let's give him a bit of a brush off. And we've got one gorgeous, bright goldfish. I'm really happy with him. I think he looks delicious. <laughs> now, I'm going to do the flowers in this gorgeous red colour. I know that sounds weird, but we're not going to use all the colours. We're going to use Tuscan Red Permanent Red. Tuscan Red, Permanent Red, um, and I think I did Golden Rod and Sunburst Yellow. There we go. Let's get rid of those two for a minute. Okay, so let's have a look at this flower in the centre. Just knocked my pen over. All right, so taking Tuscan Red, we're going to come into the centre. Make sure you leave some fade out space. Get this nice and deep in the centre. And again, kind of random, just let it come up randomly, this dark, because the permanent red will come in and change it, as you saw with the goldfish. Um, but um, I just want that sort of organic feel rather than it being a dead straight blend. So we're going in now with the permanent red <clears throat> and we're going to go over the Tuscan and as you'll see that changes and lifts that colour as the two blend together. It gives us that deep area in the base of the petal 
and then we're going to start letting it fade so again just pick spots to come out in I'm going to go this side of the lines okay then we're going to take we're going to miss mineral orange out and we're going to goldenrod um, goldenrod and we're going to go over that I'm going to fill up that flower. I know we've got deco yellow yet to do, but that's fine. Just go with the flow with me, folks, for a minute. Fill up those gaps. Okay, then I'm going to take the, no, not deco yellow, sunburst yellow, isn't it? I said, yes. Sunburst yellow, yes. And we're going to go over that. And it just changes that colour slightly. Okay, back in with permanent red. So what you'll see is just that shift in dark red to the orange. And then here I've got too much of a line. I feel that I've got too much of a line. So what I'm going to do is take the Tuscan red and almost hardly touching the page, I'm just going to put some colour down and that will reduce that line that I've got. And give us that deep rich colour without that awful line. There we go. And then I'm going back in with permanent red. There we go. And I'm going straight to sunburst yellow. I'm not messing about with goldenrod actually. I think we might miss that one out. I think it's too dark. Right, let's give that a brush off. Let's do another petal and cut out the golden rod. So we're going to get rid of that. Okay, let's do this little petal here. Petal, Lucy. Petal, not petal. <laughs> right, so I'm going in with my deep, dark Tuscan red. And I'm really going to bring that out. Very lightly, as you can see. I'm going to follow that little line there, kind of give it um, movement so that the petal is shaped rather than just flat. Okay, then we're going in with permanent red. We're going to, don't forget, we're going to cut out that um, golden rod this time. We'll see what happens. Got to be careful around my waves. Although it has got quite a nice orangey hue to it. We'll see. You can always put it in if they don't look right. Okay, so going straight to sunburst yellow. We'll fill the rest of that up and come out. Yeah, I think I'm going to go with the golden rod. It just needs that, um, it just helps with that blend there. And gives it more of that. Experimentation, folks, experimentation. Yeah, I like that with the golden rod in better. Now I'm going to come back with my Tuscan red where you can see that you've got these awkward lines. And I'm literally just hardly touching it just going to help that blend into that permanent red so 
so really just literally tickling the page and then back with our permanent red and then that should yeah there we go be less sort of linear go back in with our um, golden rod and then our sunburst yellow Right, now I've gone over a few places there. Let me just brush it off. Okay, no I haven't, it was just dusk. Right, I have got two, we'll do all the detailing when we finish, but I have got two pens here. I've got the Uniball, uh, Uniball, the Uni Posca Yellow um, acrylic paint pen. And then I've got the beautiful Artex pencils that I've just done a swatch with me on. They've got a brush side. I'll put a link up here in, throughout the video. If you haven't seen it, you can go and have a look because they really are beautiful pens. And then they've got the, um, like a felt tip nib, what do you call it? Um, bullet nib. So, I'm not going to do it all over, but just on this petal, see the little black dots that were in the page I'm going to put bright yellow dots on there these pens you don't need to shake to activate you don't need to um, what am I thinking pump them they're already activated they're really amazing pens I'm so glad that um, Artex reached out to me to try them because they will definitely be a um, massive part of my colouring life. So what I'm going to do is just show you against the Artex we're going to use the yellow Posca. We'll see if anybody can notice any difference. Now at the moment they might seem brighter but don't forget they will... There we go. A little few there. There we go. All right, so I am going to leave you. There's a shot of all the colours that we've used for the fish. And let's come out slightly for the fish and the um, flower. I'm going to leave you and I'm going to finish my fish. Two more little ones here to do, top of the page and bottom of the page, and both flowers and you'll see just even with the same colours and even if you do it in the same way that I've just done it they, they just come out different I don't know it's just because it's hand done isn't it you're doing it yourself they just come out different so and then I, we will meet together and we will look at outlining these bits so I'm going to do can you see these little flowers here at the bottom of the page to there and then we've got one up there you could change your colors up and make it more orangey or more yellowy if you wanted to but i really love the depths of the depth of that dark red and orange with this blue green background i love it so i'm going to go off and be very busy and do that and then we're going to meet up again i'll see you in a second my lovelies okay my lovelies here we are okay so i've done my fish and i've done my flowers can you tell the difference between the Posca and the um, Artex pencil? Oh, sorry. Artex pen? I can't. Both amazing. Anyway, right, so we've got a little bit of too much paleness in the centre here. So we are going back to this card here. And I'm going to see if I can find that pencil that I had earlier. I think I put it over here. Um, yeah. Okay. So I'm just going to give that a sharp and watch your ears. Okay. So we've got a few gaps in the page where our ink didn't go. Particularly round the centre, which is very, very pale. So I'm taking pale sage. And for some of these areas that haven't had that colour, it really matches well with our, um, what did we say it was, um, speckled egg. So I'm just going to put some of that in. I 
I don't know what this little patch is here. It could be a leaf. I don't know. So I'm just going to go over it because I just don't know. Okay, so pale sage. So anywhere we've got some areas of too much white or I'm just going to pop some pale sage in and mix it in with that you know just where we've got not got enough colour and just blend it in places um, like here right let's bring that up and we can just blend it in here we can just blend that in it just works really well um, down here look we've got hardly any colours so we're going to put this pale sage in here I'm going to bring out that swirl um, so in case you were wondering the prismas uh, or pencils in general work really well over Distress ink because it's a dye um, it is water reactive so if you put more water based things over it it will react to it so you have to be aware of that so I'm just putting some of this sage green in just some of these spaces it will just lift it blend it um, and it just goes so well with the colours that we've chosen sorry I've moved my little card out so pale sage not sage green sorry I do apologise um, anywhere else we can put a bit up here just feel that that blend needs a little bit more um, okay then we're going to take the um, Caribbean Sea finally 1103 and then I'm going to drop a little bit of this blue, tiny bit, really lightly into this centre and we're just going to blend that sage green and this blue together and beautiful, beautiful combination and then just go back over it it's a lovely soft all these pencils, let me scoop them out of the way keep sticking to my arm where it's like hot beautiful combination, so we're just going to bring out the centre of this I'm calling it a wave just by adding these two colours together it should just bring that centre out a little bit more there we go and then we'll do the same oh I hope you could see that I'm so sorry if you couldn't I need to pay attention I do apologise so I'm just putting the um, Caribbean Sea around the edge and I'm going to bring that out. Just really softly. Just want to draw the eye to the centre of the page too. So this should do that. There we go. Sorry. <laughs> oh my goodness, trying to get used to a new room and having moved the equipment's really hard actually after spending all the time that I have on YouTube filming in my little room. It feels really odd being in a new one. Okay, so just round the edges of these, I'm going to ignore that. Could be a leaf, but I'm going to ignore it and go over it. There we go. And then we're taking the pale sage and we're going to go round that. Push those together. There we go. So we've just got a bit more of an interesting 
a bit more of an interesting centre there. Be careful around your bread. I'll put a bit more blue in this side. Deepen that up. So that was the Caribbean Sea. There we go. And a little bit more of the pale sage. There. Okay, right, now what I want to do, I just have to pray that this works. It's not the bits that we've coloured in, but you see these bits that are coming out that have just got the ink on it. I really want to highlight them. I really want to outline them in white because they're, they look like waves to me. Now I've got the Arteza acrylic marker here, which is a titanium white. And it's had a really good shape. Now, I can't find anything as a good substitute for the white jelly roll being super uber white. So what I'm going to do is outline these parts with the Arteza marker, the bigger parts, and then I go over it with the um, jelly roll once it's dry. Okay, so let's give this a go. Let's just check that I'm working. Yeah. Okay, so I want to pick out these bits. Now while it's wet, this looks uber white and it might well do, we'll see, because I've been um, intermittently shaking it. It's got a plastic nib on it. I don't know if you can focus on that. Sorry Kevin, I know you hate that. But um, there, and there's the nib. Um, because I've had them for a while and didn't use them because they were just so see-through. And then somebody said to me in a comment, Lucy keeps shaking it. Um, they'll work really well if you keep shaking them. So that's what I did and then tried it on my practice page. And as you can see, look at that. It just works so beautifully. So we'll see whether we need the jelly roll. If it stays as white as white and opaque as that, we won't need to, but um, it kind of sinks into the page. God, you see my shaky hand there? Kind of sinks into the page and won't be as opaque. There. Let's see what happens. It looks pretty cool at the minute. So all the places, all the lines where we haven't coloured anything in, we've just got our Distress Ink background. I want to blank out. I want to put this white pen on. I'm just going to shake it again. It's got a little ball bearing in it, so I'm just shaking it and keeping the um, paint mixed as much as I can. Well, I have to admit, that's doing pretty darn good. I'm just going to go around this one because it just looks odd. So I'm just doing that. There. Okay. Right, where else have we got? We've got these outside ones here. I hope you don't mind sitting and doing this with me. But it might be quite nice for you to see how the um, Arteza pen responds. Because I do like Arteza products. And... Um, if that stays like that, we won't. I won't need to do any more. And do you know what? For shaky hands, this is a win-win because it's got a really nice nib on it. Now, if you're still with me, my um, lovely friend Cheryl sent me another package. You know, she was the lady that sent me the whole binds. She sent me another package with the most incredible things in it because as I told you she can no longer colour bless her heart. Um, so I will come on and show you those things and share them with you. Um, I don't think I've ever come across such selflessness. I mean this wonderful lady could have sold all these products um, but she didn't. She chose to give them to me because she knew that I would enjoy and get pleasure out of them. It's just incredible. What a what a wonderful lady. Um, people on YouTube never fail to amaze me. The friends that I've made. 
Um, obviously people come and go, of course they do, but the friends that I've made have really built my confidence and it's what keeps me going. You know, I, I enjoy it as much as I do the colouring. I know I've been pretty useless at getting back to people in comments. I do try to answer questions. Um, Okay, can you see now it's kind of fading I don't know if you can see that but it's kind of fading but we'll we'll go with it and see what happens so I'm just going to outline and you're not going to want to sit and watch me outline all this and talk rubbish are you there. so let's come out and have a look just catch this let's come out and have a look so all the bits that we haven't coloured, so all these bits around the edge, at the top here, around the bottom, these waves here, I'm going to outline in the white artist pen. What I will do, when I've finished outlining it in the white, and it looks pretty good, um, I will come back and um, tell you whether I've gone over with Jelly Roll or not, and I'll leave a patch for us to do together. We still have the centre of the flowers to do, but I haven't decided what colour they're going to be. All right, my lovely friends, see you in a sec. Okay, folks, this is how it looks. Now, I need to explain to you, I did just use the, where have I put it? Here, the Arteza white brush. And for the bits that you can see that are pre really predominantly white, I went over twice. So I let it dry and went back over again and it came up really well. And then the black lines looked awful they just looked like really stark so I just took again the Arteza pen and went over once so that they were sort of greyed out rather than um, rather than completely white and I think it I think it works really well so I haven't decided on the I haven't well I haven't done the center of the flower so I'm going to use the um, Posca pen let's come in and have a look so you can just see I'm going to use the Posca pen to do this because it's got a finer tip um, than my um, Artex ones and we're just going to put a yellow centre in that flower. And in this one. Just so that really stays popping out that centerpiece um, and I did take a little bit of cerulean blue and just deepened up this circle as well because I've whited it out you don't have to do that but it just mine just looked odd I just brought that edge out a little bit more in the circle so just a little bit like that okay right now oh, where's the zoom gone I lost you folks, I lost you. So here we are. I want to stickalize it, so I'm thinking, well, my usual favourite ever in the world, which is diamond stickles. And I'm going to run a little bit on the fishies, because they deserve to be glamorous. So I'm going to run around that bottom edge of Mr Fishy there. And that fin and why not we'll have a little bit on the top fin too we're going to do the same on this little fishy um, I was thinking of was I was thinking of doing um, painting glitter on you know that um, folk art stuff that I love using but I can't because of the distressing background so um, I'm going to put a little bit um, I'm going to follow the line of the flower just like that so that will bring that out in glitter you won't be able to see it very much while it's still wet um, but diamond stickles once it's dry looks amazing let's do this little guy 
And what I love about diamond stickles is that, um, I've said it before on the channel, but I'll say it again in case there's new people watching, is that it takes on the colour of underneath. So it, you don't have to have, if you don't have the budget for it, a million different stickle colours. You could just have these ones. So I've left the centre of the flowers white and let's just run a very fine line of stickles in that white. When they dry, they, it just oh, just makes a picture. I find it really hard not now to add glitter. My pages look, for me, they they look like they're really flat if it hasn't got any glitz on it. And we've got these two little ones up here. I've really enjoyed this page. I don't know why I got all stressy about doing it on camera, but I did. <coughs> Excuse me. But I've loved doing it with you. <coughs> oh my goodness! It's all happening, folks. Right. Sneezing and coughing and knocking you. Okay, I'm going to come out slightly just so we can get the whole thing in. Now, with this lighting in this bedroom, I don't know if you're going to pick up the stickles I don't know if you can can you in my other room it was obvious uh, you can on that fish but it will probably be more obvious when we are dry I'm going to photograph this I'm going to put it on Instagram <coughs> so I can tag <coughs> excuse me something's really tickled my throat so I can tag the wonderful RJ Hampson and I'm going to put it on Facebook too as my cover page now for those of you wonderful people who did support me doing our monthly colouring challenge so that you could have a chance of winning <coughs> no excuse me goodness sake there hopefully that's gone <laughs> I've actually removed that competition because people just weren't taking part in it and um, I was feeling really guilty when I couldn't get to it and stuff like that so I'm going to remove that so I'm going to make this probably the cover page of our, new, of our Facebook group but thank you to, for, to all of those that did pay, take part I did really enjoy looking at all your pictures so I'm going to let you go folks and I should be back shortly with um, we're going to do uh, have a look at some beautiful pencils that Kevin sent me and we're going to have a look at the beautiful box of supplies that the wonderful Cheryl sent to me. Thank you so much for watching and sticking with me if you've been here. I love this page. I love RJ's work and I can't wait to do more. RJ, if you're watching, thank you so, so much for sending me these books. They are just beautiful. Um, and I'd be more than happy to do more colour alongs and any more books that you're willing to put out. All right, my lovely friends, until we meet again very soon, please take really good care of yourselves. Night, night.